So this is a blog that Illumiax had written up. And in this blog, we kind of go over the TCC curves required and the layout of the TCC curve in order to do something like a selective coordination curve. Now the primary objective of a power system protection is to sense the fault for any abnormal conditions. This is very important. Anyone who is familiar with power system needs to understand. These are the characteristics of any sort of a protection scheme. Very generalized, very important to understand the terminology involved. So that's what selectivity means is that we're isolating that faulty area as closely as possible so that other uh, areas of the system does not get affected. Time current curve. So fault intensity in a power system is proportional to the magnitude of the current. So what we're saying here is that the, the higher the magnitude of current, the, the more fault intensity that we have. Now relay curves are sharper and thinner than fuse curves and breakers because relays are the only used to sense a fault and then issue a trip signal to the breaker, right? And here what we're doing is we're comparing uh, protective relays like a microprocessor based protective relay versus like a solid state breaker, an actual breaker like a low voltage breaker. So long term APIA rating is this guy right here and it's this particular region right here. So you could you could uh, go either forward or backwards, meaning in terms of the rating plug or the actual amperes of the breaker itself, you could either increase or decrease that. Short time pickup, it is 1.5 to 10 times the long time ampere rating, the setting at which a breaker tends to trip after some delay. The minimum clearing time is this curve right here, the one that's on the bottom, right? And then the maximum clearing time is the curve that's on the top. So the delay trip is basically in this particular region, whereas the instantaneous trip is actually beyond this, this region right here, beyond the B. Complete selectivity means that the protective device will minimize the effect of a short circuit or other undesirable events on the power system. So what we're saying here is that you know the closest breaker that feeds that particular faulted area is the one that actually operates and that, that localize that um, problem area. So what we're saying is that if the fault is beyond CB5, we should expect CB5 to trip, and we should not expect CB2 or CB1 to trip for that particular fault. Coordination by itself means that they are coordinated to the best of their abilities, but they're not perfectly coordinated. So how is selective coordination done? By zone, well, all we're saying is that, you know, certain breakers have certain zones. That makes our lives a lot easier to kind of comprehend this. Now, achieving selective coordination uh, using ETAP. And so it's furthest to the left because it will operate in the shortest amount of current. We said that the current was on the x-axis. Here's, here's like the, the coordination between the two. So CB1 is the furthest downstream, so we should expect it to be on the left side. And then CB2 is on the back, on the topmost, so we should expect that to be on the right side. And then there's no overlapping region. This right here would be considered as the pickup setting. This is for breaker number one or relay number one. And this point right here is a pickup setting for relay number two. It's, and this can only happen when the pickup setting of the downstream device is set to a current that is less than the pickup setting of the upstream device. Determining the, the selectivity of the set of current curves is quite easy. From load to source, um, the curves should be stacking up. Breaker number three is the furthest to the load and it's the furthest to the left and the most bottom. And then breaker number two is in the middle and then breaker number one should be furthest to the top. There's the minimum melting characteristic, um, which is represented by this solid line right here. That's the minimum melting. And then there's the total clearing characteristic, which is uh, defined by this hash line right here. So the more the current, the less the time that the cable can withstand. That's the I squared T curve. So the difference here is that full load amps is dependent on load and cable opacity is dependent on the cable's uh, current carrying capacity. So here's our cable damage curve, right? And so you can see that the breaker is, is at the left of this curve, right? And it'll operate before we get to this region. If this curve was to the left, or below the overlapping curve, then we may have higher chances of nuisance tripping. And so here's the damage curve of the transformer. It's based off of this guide, this IEEE guide, and it considers there's there's uh, the most thermal, there's a thermal cap capability of the transformer as well as this notch here, 
and this represents the mechanical capability of, of the transformer.